of cabinet woods used by marketry craftsmen. Hello, John P. Hello, Joe. How are How you? Are you? Oh, very good, no? Thanks. Lovely day, isn't it? Oh, it is lovely. Yeah. I'm um, looking for another piece of spindle wood. Oh, yes. Oh, you have a piece? Oh, yes, I have uh, another piece that I cut there at Christmas, like in Liberty, and in fact, I have a tree growing here. Have from you? Joe. Up the, here in the field. Yes, really. Is this it here? That's it there. That's a fine specimen, John. Hey? Oh, yes, it is indeed. Great one. That must be old. It's old, all right, Tom Joe. I'd nearly be afraid, ashamed to tell you when I saw it first. I could cut the bit of it, uh, well, when the leaves fall off it. Well, here's the piece I've got for you now, Tom Joe. Oh, this will be good. Here you can. Have it, maybe you'll be fit to make some use of it. Oh, sure. Oh, thanks. thanks very much. Michael cuts the groove for the inlay into the tabletop, the recess groove. The sawing of the fine strips of spindle wood is called springing. The fine strips are drawn through a die to make them smooth and square and uniform. Have I not cut here? I have you about six lines, seven. Oh, well, then it'll be a new the glue is carefully poured into the recess. The stringing inserted. And rolled home with a hot, wet roller. The comfort and security of the chair you sit on depends a lot on this gluing and pinning. The dowels, those little promontories of wood, must be set in exactly at the right angle to knit with the containing wood. And afterwards, the glue that spills over around the joint must be carefully wiped away with a wet cloth so that it won't mar the polishing process. It is this care to details, this painstaking groundwork, that makes for the perfect glimmering finish. And we will see how perfect that finish will be. Now the chair is carefully clamped together to make assurance doubly sure for the pins. As Charles Robinson says, it goes together very sweetly. The Robinsons screen print their own billheads, a process adopted for their own use by Tom Joe. Tom Joe you could describe as the bursar of the Robinson community. He runs the house, but is also, like his brothers, an excellent craftsman, 
and in his spare time when he has any, makes grandfather clocks. Ignatius sprinkles on the powder, which when toasted under the grill, causes the lettering to rise. And this is the perfected billhead, as good, you might say, as the family flag. Now the completed furniture is on the move, up and up, to the polishing shed to get that all-important finish. A bichromate of potash stain, light sensitive, is used to darken the wood. After only a few minutes, its magic is working. Up to seven coats of button French polish are brushed on, half an hour between coats and a sanding down each time. Another sanding but only after the French polish has been allowed to cure for a week. Then a mixture of carnauba, beeswax and turpentine, and a lot of hand rubbing. And strangely enough, a final polish with fine steel wool always rubbed lightly with the grain. Beeswax rubbed on a screw makes for easier driving and a better hold. And as the pieces come together in their final finished stit, table leaf to table, chair by chair, transformed from rough plank to gleaming polished wood, the Robinsons gather around to inspect their work, their finished work. They don't need to comment in words. The product of their labor and skill speaks for itself, and the very air is eloquent.